Hey love bugs, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my experience and my time working at Hooters in downtown Dallas. I've had so many requests for this video, it's like crazy. I've gotten tons of DMs asking me a bunch of questions and requesting for me to just sit down and let y'all know what I went through when I worked there. So that's what I'm going to do today. I stayed up all night kind of remembering, looking for all my pictures that I had as I worked there and I put them all into lists. So I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all like the industry wise, like uh, what it was like working there, the uniforms, the money, the regulars, stuff like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all crazy stories and experiences that I personally went through. And then I'm going to tell you why I ended up quitting Hooters. So let's get started. Okay, so I like wrote them all down on my phone and like in order. So I'm going to just go like that. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the uniforms. I always get asked questions about this. Um, like what it felt like wearing them. Was I uncomfortable? How did it make me feel? Stuff like that. So basically the uniform shirts run from, the smallest is a 3X, and this is like extra small, like 3X small, and then it's 2X, and then it's 1X, and then the biggest size we had was a small. Now of course this doesn't mean only like tiny, tiny people can work there, of course. Um, basically all of the sizing was kind of different for the uniforms, like it wasn't like regular clothes. Um, and they were really stretchy. They weren't that uncomfortable to wear unless you were wearing a shirt that was like made to fit tight on you. You know, like you, I think I wore a 2X all the time um, and that was a little bit tight. So I could have went to an extra small, which would have been bigger. And there's a dog barking outside. If you can hear that, I'm sorry. <laughs> but so um, I really like the uniforms. We wore camo ones on Tuesdays for the military because the military got a discount. And then we had black ones, which was my favorite. And then we had the traditional white and orange uniform. And we all had Dallas, Texas on it, on the shirts. And then it had like an owl. And then we had our shorts, which also um, did like extra smalls, XX smalls, stuff like that. So basically the uniforms, they weren't that uncomfortable. Underneath the shorts, we always wore tights. Um, they're very strict on our uniforms, very, very strict. We couldn't have any holes in our tights or anything like that. Our shirt couldn't be like stained or ripped and our shorts couldn't be stained or ripped or anything like that. So it was always really busy because Dallas, Texas is the world's largest Hooters. Um, we have an upstairs and a downstairs, which normal Hooters don't have. And it was, it was really busy sometimes. Sometimes, like during games, like the Cowboys game or the Mavs or the Stars, any kind of sports thing that was going on or any kind of like parade during downtown Dallas, it would get packed. And I'm talking about packed. And the bar was downstairs. So anytime we ever wanted to drink, we had to run from upstairs, downstairs, back and forth, back and forth. So um, it did get really busy sometimes, very hectic. So whenever there was any kind of like sports thing or any parade in downtown Dallas, it did get very, very busy. So I made pretty good money during those times um, when there wasn't anything going on. It really was pretty slow. After like football season was over, it got super, super slow, like very slow. Like I could sit down at a table and just hang out for like an hour and you know, I wouldn't have any tables. So, and then that's another thing, working there, when I started working there, we were allowed to kind of sit with the table and like talk to them, you know, become their friend, talk to them, be cool with them, whatever. And then like as I started working there more, they got a lot more strict on it. Like you couldn't really sit with your table. I don't know if it's still like that because I did quit in, I think I quit around June. I'm not 100% sure, but I did start in October of 2015. So I worked there for almost a year and then I quit so it's been a while since I've worked there so I don't know how everything is now but when I was working there they were getting a lot more strict on the rules they were getting a lot more strict on how we you know interacted with the customers and stuff like that um, which I think was always the rules but they were very lean lenient with us lenient didn't know how to say that for a second lenient with us so you know going in working there where you have all this freedom and then like over time they tell you like stop doing everything you were kind of trained to do it was kind of weird and then another thing that I want to talk about is regulars when I worked there regulars was a pretty big thing um almost everybody had their regulars you know what I mean like I had some really awesome regulars I had this couple that were huge star fans and we would always talk about hockey and stuff like that well they would talk about it. I didn't really know anything about hockey, but they would like teach me stuff about it. They were super, super nice. Um, and every time they came, they would always call. I don't think they live here in Texas. Or they don't live in Dallas, I know for sure, I can't really remember. But they don't live in Dallas, so every time they were going to come, they would make sure that they would stop by Hooters and they would always ask for me. They were super nice. And then I had another set of regulars that was 
not a couple, they were like exes, like, and they had a kid together, I don't know, but they would just like to hang out, so I guess they would like come to Hooters and they would talk to me and I would talk to them and I'd ask them, you know, how have they been doing? I got really, really close with my regulars, like they would tell me a lot of stuff, I would tell them a lot of stuff on a very personal level. So it was good to build relationships with people, you know, to be friends with people. Of course you meet new people every day. When I was working there, I met so many new people and the crazy thing is a lot of them were from out of the country. Like I would meet people from France, I would meet people from just like all over the place and they would tell me their stories and about like why they were here in Dallas and it was just really cool. It was really cool to meet so many different people that I had no clue were even like coming to downtown Dallas. And it's great because some of the people that I've met there I'm still in touch with today. Like I still talk to them, I still check up on them. Like I've made a lot of friends there and it's even more amazing because a lot of supporters actually message me and they send me pictures that they took with me when I was working at Hooters or they'll send me videos of me and I'll just be like that's so crazy. Like it's so crazy thinking like I was your waitress at one point and now like you're watching my videos. Like that's so crazy. Okay so now that we basically talked about about that I want to talk about some crazy crazy stuff that happened to me when I was working at Hooters okay so the first story put my phone out so the first story is it was a Sunday night and I got off earlier than everybody else and this was when I had got my first car so I was gonna drive home the drive was pretty far because I lived in Waxahachie and Waxahachie is like super far from Dallas not super far but it's a bit of a drive and that dog outside is still barking so if you can hear him i'm so sorry okay so it was a sunday night and i had gotten off work early like i said and so there's a really big rule at hooters is that you don't walk in in your uniform and you also never ever leave in your uniform because it is downtown dallas you know the world is a crazy place and when people see you know the uniform who knows what kind of thoughts they get you know what i mean so it was just really unsafe to do so and especially at night, especially if you're walking by yourself, you're actually not supposed to walk by yourself. You're always supposed to walk with somebody or we were supposed to ask a kitchen staff or, you know, a manager to walk us to our car and they would always be down to do it. But for some reason, I just didn't think about it. It was Sunday. I was ready to go home. I was so tired. I'd worked all day. So I was just like getting my stuff and I was gone. So as I'm walking out of the door, I'm slipping on my shirt right over my uniform and because that's what I would do. I just keep my uniform on and I would just pull up my pants, put on a shirt and then, you know, I'd leave. And um, so I'm putting on my shirt, so as I'm walking out, I have the shirt kind of over my head, and I like make eye contact with a man that's across the street. Now, if you live in Dallas and you know what I'm talking about, there's a back door to the Hooters, and then across the street is the House of Blues. And so it's pretty busy, and it's like literally in the middle of downtown. So there's tons of cars, you know, there's parking lots, there's tons of buildings around. So I'm walking out, and I make eye contact with a man, and that's when I notice like oh shit like I'm by myself it's like past midnight and I'm by myself and I'm walking out of Hooters you know and but I didn't think anything of it like I was like I'm not gonna freak out like I would told myself I'm not gonna freak out it's just a man you know like I can't be scared of everybody so I just kept walking and then I hear him run across the street to get behind me now he wasn't that close behind me but he was behind me and that's when I started kind of panicking and I was like okay just walk to your car just walk to your car at the time I didn't have a taser I didn't have like pepper spray or anything like that um I just had my keys in my hand I was like I'm gonna stab him if he comes after me with my keys so I'm just walking and I'm like I'm not gonna freak out like just watch your car Bernie just watch your car stay forward don't look behind you and then I hear him speeding up like I can literally hear his footsteps like walking faster behind me and I was like okay I'm gonna turn if you've ever seen um I'll probably insert a picture or something right here, but there's like two huge owls in front of Hooters So I was like, okay, I'm gonna turn where the owls are and I'm gonna act like I'm gonna walk down the street and If he turns and follows me, then I'm gonna run right back to Hooters because Hooters is um, Filled with like windows like there's windows covering the whole place So everybody in like working could see me outside if they looked but nobody was really looking They were cleaning up the store and everybody was just trying to go home So I'm pretty sure nobody was paying attention to me. So I like turned and then I hear him running and turned and he turned because I had looked back and he turned and we made eye contact again oh my god I've never been so freaking scared in my life I literally ran so fast and I don't run like ever I don't run <laughs> so I literally ran so fast to the window and I was like banging on the window I was like somebody walk me to my car hurry and I was like screaming because I wanted this man to know like 
I know what you're doing, like, I can have somebody come outside, like, I'm not gonna, like, try to play it cool and just, hmm, tap on the window, hey, can somebody help me? No. Like, so I was, like, screaming, because there was nobody, like, in downtown Dallas. Like, it was Sunday, there was nobody there, I didn't really see any cars, so I'm, like, screaming at the top of my lungs, and then I look back to see, like, where he's at, and he makes eye contact with me again, turns around, and runs in the other direction. Like... It was so creepy because it was like that confirmed it. Like he knew what he was doing and he knew that I knew what he was trying to do. I don't know if he was trying to like rob me because I just got off work or I don't even want to think. I don't even want to think about what would have happened, you know, if I wouldn't have noticed him. But it was just very, very scary. It was very creepy. Somebody walked me to my car after that and I like went home and I told my mom because I was really late because I was like telling everybody inside of Hooters, I was like watch out for this guy. I was like telling them what he looks like. I was like he was following me. Like I don't know what he was trying to do. And then so I get home and I tell my mom this and of course my mom flips out. She's like I don't want you working there anymore. You don't need to work there. Da -da 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 -da. But I got bills to pay so I was like I kind of have to work there. And so I told her that and then she went and she bought me pepper spray, she bought me all that stuff and she was like don't ever leave you know by yourself now you know like don't ever even if you're in a rush even if you're tired and you just want to get home like you gotta always protect yourself you gotta always watch out which I definitely think working at Hooters can be very very dangerous just because the setting that it's in um there's a lot of homeless people there's a lot a lot of homeless people that like to hang around there and I've heard so many stories about homeless people attacking Hooters girls, especially when I worked there. People would always tell me stories about it. So I definitely think that if you are going to work there, definitely make sure you have a taser or a pepper spray and you never leave by yourself and you don't walk by yourself. Like I know it seems like, you know, those kind of things just don't slip into your head like, oh, I need to make sure I do this so I don't get robbed or killed or something like that. But that's just the world that we live in, you know? So that would definitely be my advice to that. So speaking of homeless people, let me go ahead and tell you my experiences with the homeless people around Hooters. So this is when I had just started. I was probably a couple weeks working there, like not very long at all. I was still in training. And so I was sitting in the car. <laughs> I was sitting in the car with one of my friends and I was eating because I had just gotten off work and I didn't have a car back then. So it was his car. And so he's he's in the driver's seat, I'm in the passenger seat, and I like flip open some wings because I had took some wings from work and uh, and I was like starving because I think I had worked the morning shift and I was just like super tired and so I was sitting in the car and I was like I just want to eat here instead of waiting that 40 minute drive to get home to eat. So I'm sitting in the car and I'm eating and then I see a homeless man and I was like you know like maybe we should give him some money, something like that. So he was like okay. So he rolled down his window like barely like barely 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 because like I said you never really know what people are going to do so and he gives them a he gives them a couple dollars no I think he gave them like two dollars I think he gave them like two dollars and he slipped it through the window and he was like god bless and then the homeless man took it and he was like what am I going to do with two dollars give me another one like just like that just like that it was this man and he was like what am I going to do with two dollars give me another one like so with so much sass and I like looked at him and I was like really dude like did you really just do that and so and so I was gonna give him another dollar I was like you know screw it I just got off work you know like he's homeless I can I can give him money you know it's not that big of a deal so I got my Hooters it was in like a to-go bag I mean a to-go box and I gave it to my friend and he put it on his lap and I reached down to grab the money and then the homeless man sticks his whole arm and I'm telling you it was not rolled down that much so he like I don't know how he did it, but he stuck his whole arm in, picked up my wings, all of my wings, and I was starving. I was really, really hungry. So he picked up all of my wings in his hand, took his arm out, and just danced away. Like, danced. Like, he was, like, dancing with the wings. He was like, hell yeah, I got these wings, mm, got these wings, for to eat. Like, he was so happy. Like, he was so happy. So I didn't say anything to him. I was just like... Okay. Like, I didn't know what to do at that point. Like, what am I going to do? Like, jump out the car and fight this homeless guy for some wings? Okay, and then here's a, another homeless man story. Sorry, the homeless people in Dallas just have, like, no chill. Like, they do not give a fuck. So, I was working, and I had the kind of back section upstairs um, in Hooters. And there was this man that walked in, and he looked pretty nice. I mean, he wasn't dressed, like, all crazy. You know, he looked just like a regular guy, but he had a bat. Like, an actual bat in his hand, which... 
first of all, red flag number one, why would you ever let somebody in with a bat? Like, you should have told them to, like, leave it or leave it outside or something like that. But nobody told him anything. Nobody said anything. The host sat him down, whatever. So, he sat down and he ordered a lot of food. A lot of food. And it was just him, which should have been red flag number two, but then it's like... People eat, you know what I mean? Like, I like to eat a lot too. So he was ordering like desserts and he was ordering wings and fries and fried pickles and just like all out. And he finished all of it. Like, he finished all of it. So I was like, hey, people can eat. Like, kudos to him. So I'm just minding my own business. Like, I'm at the computers putting in my customer's order, or whatever. And I see him and I see him, you know, like, he finished his food and he was just sitting there like, kind of leaned up on his bat like his the the little handle of the bat he was like leaned up with this is really tall dude too and then the waitress told gave him his check and then she told one of our managers and she was like hey like there's this guy with a bat here like he just ate a lot of food by himself you know like I don't think anything but just you know kind of watch him because he has a freaking bat you know that's weird you don't just carry a bat into a food place you know and so so I'm out of my own business, whatever, putting in my customer's order, and <laughs> from the corner of my eye, I see him get up, and I was like, oh, you know, whatever, I didn't really think anything of it, and then I see him, like, storm off through the back, because we had a back door, and he, like, stormed off through the back door super fucking fast, and, like, I turn around really quick, and he has the bat in his hand, and he's, like, storming off, and I'm thinking, like, he just, he's about to attack somebody, but he wasn't. He was running out on his tab. And the manager runs after him, and the guy tries to hit our manager with the bat. Like, he literally stopped, turned around, and swung, like, with all his force. He just, like, was swinging on him. And the manager was like, what the heck? Like, you have to pay, you have to pay. So the manager grabbed, got the bat from the guy. And once my manager, because my manager was pretty, like, he was pretty big. Like, you know, not bigger than me, but. He was pretty big. So, he was, like, grabbing the bat from this guy. And the guy, once he noticed that, you know, the manager had got the bat from him, he took off running again. So, my manager did not want to run after him because he, my manager had a lot of problems with his leg. So, he didn't want to run after him. So, he comes back inside. And everybody's like, what the fuck just happened? Like, did that really just happen? And he's like, how much was his bill? And it was like almost $100. Like, he ate almost $100 worth of food. I think it was like 80-something. I don't know. But everybody was talking about it. It was just so crazy. And I was like, duh, he did that? He had a freaking bat. Like, why did you let him in with a bat? Like, that's so crazy. Like, what if he would have knocked one of the waitresses out or something like that? So this next story that I'm going to tell you involves the kitchen okay so it didn't really have anything to do with any of the girls working there like the managers or anything like that it was more of the machines that we had in the kitchen so basically what we did was we put in the orders um, on a computer and then it gets a ticket of that order gets sent to the kitchen through a machine and then they see what table it is they see what waitress it is and they see what the order is so that machine broke like it was not working and it was like a Saturday night I think or a Friday night and it was super packed super busy we had like a huge weight at the door and it just completely broke on us so the next thing people thought was okay we'll just manually write it you know like manually write your orders and then give the ticket to the kitchen and we only had I think three guys working in the kitchen like it was not a lot um, we didn't have a lot of help in there and so everybody was just writing orders and giving it to the kitchen, writing orders, giving it to the kitchen. Well, a lot of people, me as well, I think, I'm pretty sure I forgot to, um, were forgetting to put their names and what table. So the kitchen was making all this food and putting it out, but nobody knew where the heck it went. You know what I mean? Like nobody, either we didn't know where it went or we took something that wasn't ours and then people were still waiting. So it ended up, our tables took an hour long, made probably more to get their food. Like it was ridiculous how long it took just because it was so chaotic in the kitchen like we just couldn't figure it out the machines weren't working so we had to try to all do it again so it just took forever and it was a lot of wasted food like it my managers were so mad we were so mad because that's our money you know like people aren't gonna tip us if everything's going wrong you know but nobody really had any control over it like it was really nobody's fault it was just like the machine broke down and so people were just literally getting up from their tables and leaving even if they got their food like they were just getting up leaving they were super pissed off we were getting yelled at people were just walking out and i was just like sitting there like what do i like what do i even do like 
what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm trying to, like, figure out what to do. So then, the, since the kitchen was so, like, understaffed and they were, like, freaking out and we were freaking out, a bunch of the Hooters girls actually went into the kitchen and started doing it themselves. So I don't know if that's, like, okay, but we had to do what we had to do. You know what I mean? Like, we had to get these people their food. We had to get these people their food. And so we put on gloves, we tied up our hair, all that. We put on the hair nets, and a bunch of people started, like, doing, not actually cooking, like, on the fryer, but we were, like, doing the dressings and, like, getting the plates together and organizing the plates and, like, trying to figure out where the food goes where and helping the bartender and stuff like that. So it was just very, very hectic. It was probably the most... That night was probably the most hectic I've ever ex experienced at Hoover's. Like, it was just really, really bad. Again, it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just a computer malfunction. But it was really, really bad. That's the last story that I have to tell you. Like, crazy stories. Now, I'm going to tell you some good stories. Because, of course, Hooters wasn't the worst time of my entire life. Or was it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it wasn't the worst time. I did have some really good experiences working there. So I'm going to tell you some of the stories like that. So one really, really cool thing that happened when I was working at Hooters was that I got to meet Post Malone. Post Malone was performing at the House of Blues, which is right across from Hooters. And he was outside with his tour bus and some of his friends. And I don't even know how it happened. I think one girl was like, there's Post Malone. And we just all ran outside in our fucking uniforms and all that. He was really, really nice. He was really chill. Um, he didn't like freak out that there were so many people that wanted to take pictures with him. So I thought that was really cool. And then another person that I met was Des Bryant. He was really, really cool. Um, he actually ate at Hooters. I think he had stopped in because I was waiting on a table and this little boy had a Des Bryant jersey on. And I was just taking their order and then all of a sudden like I hear people like clapping and I turn around and Des Bryant's like right behind me and he like high fives the little boy. I guess he was walking and through the windows he saw the little boy's jersey. I th I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And he like high fived him and he was like talking to him and he did like a little lap around Hooters downstairs. And then he sat to eat. Um, one of the girls that I was really really cool with actually waited on him and he gave her a huge tip. And they were talking and him and his friends were there and he was just really cool. He actually took a selfie on my phone as well. I will insert that here and here and here. And he was just really cool. We took like videos together on my Snapchat. He was just really down to earth. We were talking about football and stuff like that. I don't really know anything about football but I love the Cowboys of course I'm from Texas like I love the Cowboys and so that was really cool getting to meet like celebrities and stuff like that also Hooters just really can be really really fun sometimes we have a little jukebox there when we would play like music and it could be you know pretty loud and we could just be dancing or singing along or whatever it can be really really fun we also have like special events we also have like a little runway thing that happens and it's just really cool like there's a lot of opportunities that you can reach through working at Hooters like they do have like calendar girls and stuff like that so those are some pretty cool things that I experienced and like saw <laughs> no it just hit the little door okay sorry um that I experienced like when I was working there so it wasn't all bad or all crazy like there were some really good moments that I had when I worked there so now I'm gonna tell you why I quit okay so when, around the time that I was about to quit Hooters, um, that's when I had started posting my makeup looks, I had started growing on my Twitter, I had made my YouTube account, I don't think I had my video up yet, no, I don't think I had my video up yet, but I did make my YouTube account, and I was really focused on that, like I was really excited, like I was like, oh my god, like this, this is what I want to do, like this is what I want to do, this is what I love, this is my passion. I want to do this like here's my opportunity I need to hurry up and take it so I was really focused on that and then we went to California for the first time and that's when Nathan had flown out to meet with Univision and he got signed with Univision and then like it was just an amazing experience Nathan had never been to California before and so I had been but I had went with my sister and so being with him there was just amazing getting to like see the industry getting to see like what everybody's doing over there was huge because where I'm from, like Waxhatchee and stuff like that, there's not like all these special events and like celebrities and private parties and stuff like that. So it was just completely new to me and it was very exciting. And then I got back and it was like, I don't want to be here. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like, now that I see what I could have 
why am I settling? You know what I mean? Like, that's just how I personally felt. I felt like I was really trapped here, and I felt like I was focusing so much on, like, my friends. Because when I worked at Hooters, I partied a lot. Like, we were always going out after work. I was always spending all the money that I made. Like, I was literally going broke, and I was like, okay, I need to stop my shit. Like, I need to stop the bullshit. So, that was one of the huge reasons why I quit because I did want to throw myself full force into YouTube. Now at that time I wasn't getting paid um, on YouTube. I wasn't signed with the network or anything. Right now I'm signed with Univision. So it was like really a risk. Like it was a really big risk. <laughs> um, I kind of just like threw myself into this. You know what I mean? With nobody telling me like oh, you're going to do it, you know, besides Nathan and, like, my mom and, you know, my family, nobody was telling me, like, you can do it, you know, like, this can be your future, you, you, you can do this, and it was really the opposite, like, it was very much the opposite, which is another reason why I quit. Uh, there was a couple people that I worked with that were very supportive, like, one of the bartenders that I worked with, she was very nice to me, she was very supportive, and some of the regulars or people that I met through Hooters were very supportive once I told them what I wanted to do, because a lot of people had told me to do makeup, you know what I mean? Because I would go to work and I would always have this, like, dramatic makeup on, and they're like, why don't you do YouTube, why don't you post your looks, you know, stuff like that. And then there were people that were not so supportive, there were people that really pushed me down and like were very negative and just didn't believe in me and would talk a lot behind my back and kind of just be really nasty towards me and I lost a lot of friends through that which is okay you know what I mean like people lose friends all the time you outgrow each other you know things happen not everybody is meant to stay in your life forever I was like you know what I need to focus on my future and nothing else and that's what I'm gonna do so um I quit probably a couple days or a couple weeks after I got back from California um it was a pretty nasty kind of time for me like I was going through a lot at that time again I had a lot of people like pushing me down and just being very negative about me and my passions and like makeup and they're like it's just makeup like it's just this it's not even that serious but it is that serious because I mean look where I am now look where other people are on YouTube doing makeup you know what I mean like my passion was very serious and it hurt me a lot to know that people didn't take that serious but so I quit because of that I quit because I was getting so much negativity where I worked and I was like this is just a job like there's thousands of jobs out there so I was like you know what I quit so the way I quit was very unprofessional the way I quit was very unprofessional I can say that because I know it was um I could have done it a different way but at the time I just didn't really care I was over it so I called into work one day and I spoke to my manager I called into work and I was like hey I can't make it um, because I just wasn't feeling it anymore. Like, I didn't want to go. I just didn't want to be around them. I didn't want to anything. I just didn't want to go anymore. And so I was like, hey, I called in. I'm, I'm calling in, whatever. And so then I'm Snapchatting, and I think me and Nathan went to the movies that day. And I put it on Snapchat because, again, I just didn't care. Like, I didn't care. I had all my coworkers on Snapchat, but just didn't really care. So one of my coworkers actually Snapchatted me, and she was like, but you can't come to work. And I was like, nope. Like, can't. <laughs> So then she started like being talked shit to me, just being very rude and like Snapchatting me videos of like saying all this stuff. And I was like, you can tell him I quit. Like I'm, I'm not gonna go. Like she was making a very big deal about it because I had called in. And again, calling in does affect you know other people's schedules because like they have a chart on where all the tables are gonna be, and the charts have all the waitresses' name on it. So when waitresses don't come in, then they have to redo everything, and like people get shitty sections or they get better sections or stuff like that so um but I just didn't care like I I didn't want to be there anymore this wasn't what I wanted anymore I was over it like I just didn't want it anymore and so I was like you can tell them I quit like that <laughs> just like that and then I blocked her on snapchat and then I was done with it just like that my managers never called me again I never called them I was just done and I don't regret it I don't regret any of it because I just wasn't happy there and I don't feel like you should stay somewhere where you're unhappy or when it's very toxic and I feel like it was very toxic for me not the 
job but what I did after the job like like I said I party a lot I was always coming off really really late my sleeping schedule was all off because I wouldn't get off till like 2 or 3 in the morning I would drive 40 minutes home so I was just done with it I was like I don't I don't want to do this anymore so I'm not gonna do this anymore um I did want to get another job after I quit Hooters, but then we started doing Glam Gang, and then we started, like, just doing all these things, and companies started reaching out to me. So I think in the end, it was a really good decision that I did quit Hooters because I just threw myself into my passion, and now I'm here with almost 50,000 subscribers. So, I mean, I think God has a plan for everything, and I know... I just didn't want to be there anymore and I know that I had to get some people out of my life and I had to kind of just focus on myself and realize that nobody's gonna help me like I have to do this on my own you know what I mean like I have to be dedicated and motivated at all times even now like sometimes like I just don't feel motivated at all and I have to tell myself like no you can't stop doing this like you can't stop being consistent you can't stop putting out content you have to stay stick it you know like stay what? You have to stay, you know, with it. That's what I meant to say. You have to stay with it because if you don't, like, it'll be gone like that. That was my experience working at Hooters. So give this video a thumbs up. If you did like this video, leave me a comment down below about your experience working there or if you're planning on working there. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because we're almost to 50,000. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.